to the DC films. This is from uh, Casey Boyce, who's executive over at HBO Max. Uh, one of the things that Anne Sarnoff has been big on is trying to make DC work in a more organized and integrated way. It wasn't there before, but the people at HBO Max, Warner Brothers, and DC are trying to be mindful about how all the pieces work together. In my estimation, it feels very well organized. And I wanted to go right to this question because of what we were saying about the Penguin and the HBX, the HBO Max show and the HBO Max Gotham universe and the HBO Max Batgirl universe and the HBO Peacemaker universe, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. It seemed to tie into the DC universe quite well at the end, but um, Steve, let's start with you. <laughs> you hear this because you are the most conflicted on DC. You're just like, not conflicted, but you just are like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I care what's going on. This is why you don't either, so don't feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, but you see this, though, and, and take everything in the past aside. Does this give you any reassurance that going forward, there may be some connective tissue to what's going on? All I can say is it's about time. <laughs> you know, like that's <laughs> something that I need. I need someone somehow to put these all together so I can make sense of them. So if that's what they're, if that's the direction they're finally going for, I couldn't be any more ecstatic about it because i rack my brain you know i used to have hair here <laughs> i rack mm -hmm. my brain trying to figure out how things connect or you know or how they don't connect either right you know you know like you told me joker is a standalone film okay that's great i understand joker is a standalone film i can get behind that but when there's so much ambiguity i i don't know so if they're if they're trying to pull it together i'm for it yeah. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but Michael Keaton's in Batgirl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apparently he's setting up for three. They're setting up Gotham Knights. That'll be a trilogy of movies for her, Tim Drake, Jason Todd, and Dick Grayson. With Michael think, Keaton as the mentor team lead. I think they're going to throw in Black Canary in that team as well. Yeah, and she could... Uh, I'm not familiar with all of the like X Force groups of DC, but she could be a part of another like A team or A list of people. Yeah, it's yeah, I got some nights though. I, I agree with that too. I, I think my thing is I love Man of Steel. Everyone, I love Man of Steel, and I, I really like Batman and Superman. And I thought uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League was fantastic. Um, but I think with Man of Steel, though, is it felt like, especially with Marvel at that time, where Marvel was, it was still young, right? But it was, everyone was kind of all in on Marvel. It was the wrong movie as your starting out point. That is not, it wasn't the universe that you kick off on. And and I love Zack Snyder. I think it's fantastic. But Zack Snyder, and look, I know he's got Rebel Moon coming out, and that was a, a rejected Star Wars pitch. I'm excited to see I don't that think out. I'm excited too, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's probably going to be a good movie, but it wouldn't be a good Star Wars movie because he's too. <sighs> Zack Snyder has a very specific style and flair, and either mm. you like it or you don't. Right? There's mm -hmm. very little middle ground on that. And sure. and and when he was first hired to direct it, I thought it was a strange choice because you know Christopher Nolan was like it's a realistic one. I'm like, but this is the guy who did 300 and Watchmen and. Um, What's that one I'm thinking of? The the girls and the... What's that one? Oh, yeah. Sucker How come punch. I can't think of it now? Sucker Punch. Yeah, Sucker, Sucker Punch. Bro Brock. Really, like, Brock loves really good Sucker movie. Punch. It is a good movie. Brock loves it. We saw it in the theater. But but those movies are very Ooh. stylistic. They're very stylized, yes. right? They're over-the-top style. And I don't think that works for Star Wars. And so I think, you, I think it's smart. I think let him do his Rebel Moon and let that branch off into its own its own uh, shared universe like army of the dead like i'm cool mm -hmm. with that but if but he's just he's he's so specific in the style and tone that even wonder woman had a lot of that style and tone and then when he wasn't there for wonder woman too that was all gone. there's a good mix I, I feel but it for me that was the wrong kicking off point you kind of let him be the feige of it but he wasn't really because he had people mm -hmm. telling him no so there was obviously a lot of conflict there i mean the batman and superman movie if you look at the theatrical one versus the extended one that's you it's a good movie versus a an okay movie and then justice league is like you they greenlit a four-hour movie whether they want to admit it or not that was the script sure. that they greenlit and mm -hmm. and you know 
I, I do think it's too long to be theatrical for sure. I think it's perfect for HBO Max. But that's not how you kick things off. I think, and I think that's what he's alluding to here in this statement is like, we started there and it wasn't really a plan. We just kind of started with a movie. And then we were like, well, that movie's going to start it all, even though I don't think it ever was meant to start at all. And now they're like, okay, let's take a step back. They have the flash. They can reset whatever they want and they can take a step back, take a seat and just be like, this is what we're doing. The other thing guys is the multiverse. I think Marvel's going to take the multiverse and kind of have like a contained story with it. But I think DC is going to embrace the multiverse and, and here in Canada, we have a streaming service called Crave. And if you look at the DC film, they have a playlist and it's called the DC Multiverse on Crave. And it's just every DC movie ever made is just on that mm -hmm. thing. And you just watch it. It's the multiverse. And I think they're going to embrace that more. And Steve, to your point with, I think they'll be like, this is the Joker movie that doesn't take place in the universe. And this is the Batman movie, which takes place in this universe. And there's going to be more structure to how this plays out, but they're also going to have the freedom to do whatever they want because of this established multiverse in the flash. But Scotty, how, uh, how wrong am I? Tell me now. No, I love the, the way that DC does their multiverse. It's almost safer because they use crisis events or they use like cosmic things that happen caused typically by a Barry Allen um, to change everything. So Whereas Marvel is tied to the continuity, even throughout multiverse, like it's even more complicated. They have to make sure that a change that affects that universe affects all the other ones in a way that's not going to mess up future plot lines where DC just has a reset button. I think uh, I think the Flash movie is going to be pretty interesting and I'm almost kind of leaning towards like it won't be a Flashpoint, but it might end in Flashpoint. Yeah, you mentioned that last week. That, yeah, so that is intriguing. We'll see, because Keaton and Aff Keaton and Affleck both have to be in that. So, in my opinion, it's either gonna start with one and end with the other, or keep them like one of them is just gonna have a I one scene climactic type thing. I think it's Affleck. But yeah, me too. I but I saw a, a post and we showed the pictures last week of the the set photos of Batgirl. And they're like Michael Keaton's stunt double on on the streets, and there was mm -hmm. one image, and I'm pretty sure it was a fake. It had Ben Affleck's Batmobile on the street. I'm pretty sure it was just photoshopped in there. And I was like, "Ooh, that would be tough." I'm hoping mm -hmm. we get the '89 Batmobile to return in it. Steve, any any other thoughts on on the DC state of DC? Are you gonna Are you gonna uh, become a huge uh, Aquaman fan now? Next question. <laughs> you, you know what end? though? You know what though? You actually you did enjoy Shazam. And Black Adam's coming out, which which could connect, which should connect to Shazam, and then Shazam could yeah. connect to to other movies going forward. So maybe this is they're using the movies that they know that the that the mass population enjoyed, like Shazam. And they're going to say, okay, let's center around that and let's bring it all in on, on that world. Look at <laughs> that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's... <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're okay. It's happening. It well, there you go. <laughs> I was just, I was just thinking, was, first. it's a, a little off topic, but I was just dwell, dwelling on, are we ever going to see a payoff to uh, the ending of Justice League, where you kept seeing the visions of Flash's future, or the future where uh, Batman is teaming up with the Joker and, you know, in the script. Are we ever going to see a payoff to that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, you see, they set it up and it look like it's, it's looking very unlikely they're going to be able to deliver on that, but just. That's just what I was just kind of hung up on. I was like, you know, with all these different multiverse stories that, that could play, or not multiverse, you know, uh, Flashpoint stories, are we actually going to see that one play out? Or are they going to say, oh, no, we prevented it by such and such happening? You know what's crazy about that whole thing is I remember when Justice League uh, was being finished, the Zack Snyder one, and everybody was all about it, clamoring for all the stuff. Grace Randolph had him on her podcast numerous times. And she said that through talking with actors and hearing things that Le both Jared Leto and uh, Ben Affleck said they would gladly return for anything mm -hmm. related Joker or Batman that as long as it involved Zack Snyder. Um, and I, uh, I remember her saying something along the lines that like the, the future of the Joker character re is reliant 100% on support for the Zack Snyder like story. That's where they want that Batman to go into that nightmare scenario. I saw a tweet. Uh, I don't think it was from anybody specific. And I just kind of read it. And I was like, Oh, that's a cool idea, but I'm going to, 
I'm going to propose it to you both here. And it said, I think the specifics were in three years' time, HBO Max series that takes place in uh, the Snyder uh, nightmare sequence. And it's a series, and then the person was like, he doesn't direct them all, blah, 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 but that's beside the point. Who cares? Would you? Do you guys think that that's – is there potential for that, do you feel? that there, that? Because I think if Snyder is – I don't think he's going to come back unless there's a big change, and that big change could be HBO Max because he really seemed to enjoy working with HBO Max with the, the Justice League. Do you think there is the possibility that we see a series, miniseries, or a standalone movie about Zack Snyder's Justice League sometime down the road? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Let, right, let make, some of these, <laughs> make some uh, money off these other HBO Max shows, and I feel like it's just going to snowball. And yeah, give me all that. I think Zach would have a great time as an executive producer, not even yeah. having to, uh, like you said, direct everything. Just show run it. I, he mm-hmm. did that on his part in his driveway, too, right? That in the Green Lantern, which ended up being Marshman. He did that on his driveway in his backyard or whatever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just make the HBO Max in his backyard. Like Robert Rodriguez makes Spy Kids in his basement. He can yes. make that in his backyard. Steve, what were you going to say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. All right. Actually, let's go on to uh, Peacemaker now. Peacemaker had uh, the ending. If you haven't seen Peacemaker, you're going to want to. Skid- skedaddle right now because we're going to talk about the ending of Peacemaker here where the Justice League made a triumphant presence. I thought it was great seeing them on the show after eight episodes of, of Peacemaker knocking them down, talking smack about them. Uh, the Justice League showed up, but it wasn't the full Justice League. It wasn't. It was Wonder Woman, of course. Aquaman, The Flash, and Superman. And we have some a picture of some of the uh, stunt doubles, the body doubles that portrayed these characters right here. Obviously, Jason so Momoa to... and, yeah, yeah. and Ezra Miller were there. Ezra Miller now has the most cameo, the most appearances as a Flash, as a DC character than anybody else in the films. Ooh. And here they are right here. We have a Superman, we have a Wonder Woman, and we have a Batman. And the Batman actually posted this. God, he cut. said that there was Batman and Cyborg were both in it. And he doesn't. He said it was unfortunate that he was cut, uh, but obviously it wasn't up to him. He had the time of his life doing it, and you'd have to ask James Gunn and WB why Batman wasn't there. Uh, so anyway, did you guys like the ending of uh, Peacemaker? And do you think that it would have? Do you know why Batman's not there? I mean, I think I know why. Do you mean <laughs> story story wise why he's not there, or you know, real world why he's not there? All, all of it. All well, real world. Well, I mean, the, he, he was there. They 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 rubbed him out in post, so he was mm-hmm. there. But Scotty, why isn't why isn't Batman in the scene? Come on, hit me, hit me, hit me. Uh, it's just that they don't want to tell stories about that Batman. I think it's kind of as, as simple as that. They wanna they wanna move away from the Justice League. I feel like the only reason this did get put in there is because they filmed it on a marvel set i heard that you know marvel came in and assisted with this final scene and that is true i guess uh so it would make sense that james gunn would try to put superman and all these people on the set at marvel you know probably not even telling warner brothers at first and then just presenting the material and they were like Oh, yeah, this scene is amazing, except, and they just take a little eraser and like throw a, a spotlight behind Wonder Woman so you can't tell it's her and have Superman flying in the shadows. It's just so, uh, I don't know, I want to get too negative about it, but it's very frustrating as a DC fan who enjoys all of it. The distractions with like Ray Fisher and all that stuff, it's just. I will never take yeah, that... Warner Brothers seriously because of that. And mm-hmm. not to just keep on it, but the Joss Whedon interview and all that stuff, it's just like, it's getting worse and worse, man. <laughs> it's getting worse for me as a fan to stomach some of the stuff they do. But... Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I think you're the bat. See, I, I'm with you. I'm, I think I agree with you that that's why they, they rub Batman out. They scrub them out because that's not their Batman, but at the same time, who mm. cares? He was the Batman. He's going to appear in the flash. Uh, so Steve, every this single place- thing they'll see, sorry, we'll just say restore the Snyder verse. So like, instead of talking about oh, Peacemaker, 
it'll be hashtag restore the Snyderverse. So they're just trying to avoid it's, that. Yeah, it's probably a good point. Um, Steve, though, you see this. Does Peacemaker take place before or after The Flash? I'm thinking before. Yeah. Because I, I think Peacemaker takes place, what, uh, a couple months away from the last Suicide Squad movie. So I think Flash is further down the line. Um, I mean, I don't know I'm not upset that Batman wasn't there. You know, not every you know, not every uh, superhero had to be there to be the Justice League. They had four of them representing the Justice League. I'm fine with that. Um, like I said, there's other you know we know there's other reasons why those characters weren't there, but they had enough with uh, Aquaman, Aquaman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman. That's all they needed just to make it funny. And that's what it was. It was a sight gag, right? It was you know. It was a, they built it, it up amazing. all season, right? <laughs> I love so, that scene. Yeah, yeah, like it was great. It was, it was <laughs> hilarious. So it accomplished what it needed to accomplish with or without Batman. And I think if people are yeah, interested, Batman... they should look the scene up because it really doesn't spoil the show. But, it, you know, it's just no, like something all. he keeps talking about the Justice League throughout the show. As in, like, why am I doing this? Where are they? And so yeah. it's just it's hilarious. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was it was a great job. I mean, it was a, it was a perfect send off to this to the to the season. And even if that was like the final, the series, let's say finale, that was such a great great send off for it. I I just I'm okay with Batman not being there because I, I, when I watched, I was like I clued into Batman and Cyborg not being there right away, but at the same time, I was like, well, maybe they had a fish to fry. But the Aquaman joke is what made it all, and then the Flash, and Amazing. and it was great. But but we got to bring up the fact, guys, that that Superman, that was one hundred percent Henry Cavill's Superman. Like there was no disputing which Superman that was, and that's going to lead into our next topic. We're going to go to this one before we hit up Doctor Doctor Strange. We're changing around the order a little bit on this because this was a few years ago, guys. We're going to put this on the screen here. Uh, Henry Cavill was on a plane. See that? That's Henry Cavill on a plane. We're very, very specific. And then um, this uh, at crypt zero dad underscore. But that's awesome. A few weeks ago, I did some work on the new Flash movie. This is from like a year ago, I think. Here we go. August 21st, August 2nd, 2021. A few weeks ago, I did some work on the new Flash movie with Superman and Batman on set at the same time time boyhood dream come true he then followed up with geez this got some engagement no kidding uh sorry for not replying sooner but i actually have a life outside twitter yes cavill not saying anything else also will be deleting the tweet so you fanboys better screenshot it quick before it's gone and no i won't be getting fired recent reports guys have indicated that henry cavill superman is not in the flash but it will be just simply news reports on the side. But looking at this from not even a full year ago, are the reports of Superman on a plane a lie? Or or not on a plane, sorry, Superman on television and old reports with old footage from Man of Steel. Is that a lie? Are they trying to trick us? Are they deceiving us so that when he appears in the movie, we are shocked and surprised? And is Henry Cavill still in the DCEU or whatever you want to call it, Scotty. I don't know, man. They, uh, <laughs> they're doing all this on purpose. It's like t- they're yes. going as, as close up against the Snyder as they can without crediting him. And it's so annoying. It's like you're, you can see it. Like we can all see what you're doing back when it was Shazam. And that, you know, the whole thing with Shazam, I'm okay with that because we didn't know if we, we didn't know we weren't getting Man of Steel 2 ever. So now it's just like when, when we know what the agenda, the agenda is, and it's just like, I'm an all or nothing right now. It's like, why are you, are you towing the line so close to it? Instead of just being like, dude, why don't you, why can't you come in and do mocap on your face for five minutes? And, you know, don't just put a fork in that super in that Superman. That's foolish to me. Steve? I got nothing. <laughs> he agrees with everything I said, actually. Well, you, you, <laughs> made, some, <laughs> I, I... you, you made some good points. Um, I don't know what, like you said, I don't know what to believe anymore, and that's, that's how they want it to be. So 
I don't, you know, I could speculate one way or the other. We're all, you know, we're, we're all going to find out eventually. Um, so I'm just, I'm just sitting back and until I see it, I don't believe it. That, that's the way I'm looking at it. I heard that Cavill wanted more money. That's what I heard. I heard Cavill, they brought him in, they offered him something and he said, no, I want more. And I don't know if he wanted too much or they offered him too little. I also know, and I said this, I think I've said this every week we've done this now. I wouldn't blame him for not wanting to go back to that world of Superman because of the way Warner Brothers handled it and himself and everything around it. And even if you look at just Zack Snyder's Justice League, the press around it, Cavill was like nowhere to be seen on any of that, right? Like Affleck, mm-hmm. like you said earlier, Scotty was at the forefront. He's like, no, I love this. Jared Leto had more. I think they talked to Jared Leto more than they did to Henry Cavill during that whole thing. So it's very curious uh, why he's keeping quiet. But also, look, he has The Witcher. He has he just signed on for something else that's big. He's Sherlock Holmes. He's got a lot going on. He doesn't necessarily need Superman. And if Warner Brothers were dicks to him, I, 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 I'm all, I'm all with him not wanting to come. I, oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I think, though, I think they'll find a way to bring him back because I, I he was a great Superman. He's a, he's a nerd. And he he wants. I think he deep down wants to be Superman, whether he will admit that to himself, or, or not. So, we'll find I'm waiting out. for. The, uh, I'm waiting for DC to find their Robert Downey Juniors. Like, where like Superman should be a character that can be put in in portrayed I've, seven eight times by the same person, and you know I'll, where's your Iron Man mentality. DC, they, they had that with Henry Cavill. They just screwed. They screwed the pooch off the get go, and I think they thought they had that Steve mm-hmm. when they cast Ben Affleck. I thought Ben. I think they thought Ben Affleck was their Iron Man, Would and he was. Be, He's in Suicide Squad. Yeah. Would it be the end of the world if they just recast him and said, "All right, it's the same Superman, just but a different actor. Just get over it, move on. Here we go." Is that out of line? <sighs> I know I don't think it is, except for the point that Scotty brought up two seconds ago. Restore the Snyderverse, which and like I said, I love those movies to death, and I would be all in on more of them. But seeing that hashtag every two seconds, you know, when James Gunn makes a movie, is Restore the Snyderverse. This movie sucks. Yep. It's like, no, they can both be awesome. You don't you don't have to choose one or the other. You know, you you the don't Flash. have to review bomb Godzilla because. <laughs> Elmo, you don't have to attack Elmo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, come on, I, I don't. That's the, that's, the, that's the problem. Is, is fans have somehow clung to, to Zack Snyder, and he, I think he kind of enabled it a little bit, but he got his way. He's like, now he needs, like, you guys need to. Mm-hmm. They'll just to isolate it. Stuff, but it. They'll just say, oh, this is Earth ninety nine, and we'll never see it again. Yes. And the and Flash will establish get. that. Yeah. And I think, and I think we're going to get uh, Val Zod as well. I think he's showing up uh, at some point, and that's going to be our Superman going forward. All right, let's move on. 